Today on the BRS 160, we're gonna top off this tank. Hi guys, my name is Ryan. Welcome to another week of the BRS 160, where every week we do our best to help you guys, members of the reefing community, enjoy your tanks and find new ways to explore the hobby. We do that by following the setup and progression of this 160 gallon reef tank. Today we're gonna to talk evaporation, why dealing with it is a critical component of tank stability and protecting your equipment. The various ways to deal with evaporation, including one option where you'll never have to carry another bucket of top off water, as well as some maintenance tips. We'll of course finish with the auto top off installation for the BRS 160. Every aquarium is going to evaporate water. However, reef tanks typically evaporate more water than most other tank types because they have a lot of surface area, most often don't have a lid on the aquarium, and they have high flow with a lot of surface turnover. It's common for average sized tanks to evaporate anywhere from one to four gallons a day. This is primarily a stability issue. As you know, stability is one of the biggest components that differentiates the average to good tanks and the epic show tanks with incredible growth, health, and coloration. As water evaporates, the water leaves, but the salt stays. So all kinds of parameters start to increase with salinity, calcium, alkalinity, unwanted nutrients. Basically everything gets increasingly concentrated and then suddenly reduced when we replace all that evaporated water with fresh water. Not exactly as stable as most of us would like. Outside of that, it's important to replace evaporated water if you care about your equipment in your home. All of your heaters, pumps, skimmers, probes, and other equipment are designed to be operated submerged underwater. Not only can they break fairly easily if they're exposed to air, but equipment like heaters and pumps can also become fire hazards or melt through your sump and become flood hazards for your home. Obviously things we'd like to avoid. There are a few basic ways to top off the tank starting with by hand. If you do it every single day by hand, it's likely stable enough. Some reefers will set up some type of container with a slow drip to make it even more stable. However, doing this every single day is one of the bigger maintenance pains and not a stable or safe long-term plan if you're not really going to do it every day. Also makes going on vacation more complex. The most popular method is what's known as an auto top off, which uses float, optical, heat, or electrical sensors and valves to refill the tank. The simplest form is probably just a reservoir connected to a float valve in the sump. When the water evaporates, the float goes down and allows water to enter the tank until the level is correct again. Well, this works fairly well in the short term. The seal in the float can easily be followed by algae, salt creep, a rogue snail, or any number of things. If that happens, your entire freshwater container will empty into the sump, which is obviously bad for the tank, and possibly for your home's floors, depending on how big the freshwater reservoir is. This is why float valves alone are not that common for auto top-off solutions in reef tanks. The most common solution is a pump driven auto top off which uses a float, optical, electrical or temperature based sensors to monitor the water level and a pump to refill the tank as needed. Reliability of these solutions are closely tied to the quality of the sensor and technology behind it. For instance, float switches have moving parts that can get stuck with algae, salt creep and that rogue snail. Electrical sensors can get calcium deposits or other tank debris stuck on them which can prevent this type of sensor from triggering properly as well. That said, there are auto top offs out there which we trust here at BRS and a lot of reefers have used successfully for a long time. Like most everything in this world, you get what you pay for. The best advice I can give is stay away from the latest technology or products out there. Let other reefers test this stuff which almost always has either reliability issues or component quality issues in the first couple generations. Make sure to read the reviews and select the one that has a lot of them, meaning it's been tested long term and adopted by the reefing community. Also look for the type of failures if there are any. No one wants it to stop working or break, but what we're really concerned about is failing in the on position where the pump gets stuck on and empties a reservoir into the tank. For a reefer on a budget, I think the JBJ ATO is the best value. It does rely on float switches with moving parts, but as a primary and backup sensor, as well as an internal timer that triggers if the pump's been on for too long, you can take the top off and adjust the length the timer is on if needed. It is a low cost option, so you might want to consider using a float valve in conjunction with this. Installed on the side of the sump slightly higher than you want the water level, so it triggers as a backup, but stays out of the water and reduces the chances of something interfering with the seal. By far our favorite option is a Tunes Oscillator and there are a few reasons for this. First, the primary sensor is optical and doesn't use any moving parts, which is really ideal for a saltwater environment. It also includes a float backup switch and an internal timer, which turns the pump off if it's been on too long as a final backup. 
I've personally never seen an oscillator fail in the on position ever. The sensor can get dirty if you never clean it and fail off, but that's much less of a concern than on in most cases. The thing about the oscillator that pulls us all together is a time-tested proven reliability of both the mechanics of how it works as well as the quality of components. Take a moment to read the reviews and you'll know you're getting the most trusted option out there. The oscillator comes with a pump, and if needed, the flow rate can be increased or decreased with an internal knob. There's also a couple cool accessories with a solenoid, which can replace the pump with a valve, which opens and closes a quarter inch line. There's also a socket adapter, which allows you to use most AC pumps if you wanted. With any auto top off, you're going to want to get a storage container for the top off water. Synergy Reef created a cool one for a clown harem tank, but any reef safe container will do. My suggestion is to get a stool or chest and put it next to the tank to hide the container. I personally try to get a container large enough to hold a week's worth of water, so I only have to fill it every weekend when I do my other maintenance. If you don't trust the auto top off you have, you might want to consider only adding a few days worth, but that kind of defeats the purpose in most cases. After the last method of topping off your tank comes in, where you never have to haul around another bucket of top off water in your life. Hooking your RODI system directly to your tank to automatically replace water as it evaporates. First thing you need to understand is you are plumbing a never ending water supply to your tank, which means if it fails somehow, it's almost certainly going to wipe out your tank and destroy your floors or home. If a flow valve gets stuck, solenoid breaks, or your dog or cat chews through the RO line, really all kinds of things. So if you do this, know there's a risk attached to it and everything you're going to do is about managing that known risk. This typically starts with connecting the RODI system to the sump with a float valve. First step of managing that risk is try and use a fixed float valve rather than an adjustable. The wing nut is just something that can get bumped and loosen and fail. Since a float valve in a saltwater environment isn't reliable on its own, we need to add some redundancies. A solenoid connected to an auto top off or float switch on an aquarium controller is a great idea. In this case, if the water level gets too high, the sensor will trigger the solenoid to close and shut off the water supply. You can also use standalone leak detectors or leak detectors for aquarium controllers like your Apex, which can be used to close a valve or solenoid as well. Keep in mind, you can use these solenoids to either shut off the water supply to the sump, or alternatively, you can even use them to shut off the water supply to the RODI system itself. There are also water sensing leak alarms like the Watchdog, which sets off an ear piercing alarm if it ever detects moisture. And for those of you with pets or young children, consider routing the RO line inside a pipe or some type of cable management system you consider to be childproof enough. If you're into reefing long term, setting up a top off system like this is probably worth the time, effort, and expense because it not only makes your tank more stable, but also drastically reduces the work involved with the reef tank, both of which really increases the overall chances you're going to be successful long term and stay in the hobby. One note on this type of permanent solution is you are going to experience increased DI resin consumption because the initial spurts that come out of the system once it's turned on are typically higher in TDS, which is referred to as TDS creep. This is pretty much just a reality you're going to have to live with. You will use more DI resin than you did before, but most reefers will find the time versus expense trade-off a positive one. You're also somewhat less likely to spill water all over the house, which is a whole different issue. If it's really important to you to minimize DI resin consumption, you can set up a timer and a solenoid so the RO system is only on once a day. This has a small impact on stability, but it will reduce TDS creep effects. You could also build an elaborate system which fills a reservoir and doesn't refill until it's empty, but that's way beyond what most of us are willing to do to save a few bucks a month in DI resin. Last tip on auto top offs before we move on to the BRS 160, just like every other piece of equipment on the tank, if you don't maintain it, expect it to fail. As part of your monthly maintenance, make sure to disassemble and clean all the sensors, valves, and switches. If you do this properly, even most of the value auto top offs out there will last a long time, and the premium options will likely outlast the tank that they're on. On the BRS-160, we want an ultra-stable option that requires the least amount of work, so we're going to hook up our BRS Universal Water Saver Plus RODI system directly to the sump. The primary level sensor is going to be the Tunes Oscillator with the solenoid accessory. This will allow us to adjust the level fairly easily with a magnetic sensor mount. One thing to note is the Tunes Oscillator does have that 10 minute maximum on time before the safety is triggered. We're using a 150 gallon per day RODI system, so that shouldn't be an issue. To back that up, we drilled a hole in the sump and installed a float valve. Notice we used a fixed float valve so we don't have to worry about that wing nut getting loose. We also installed a flow lock leak detector outside the sump as a final backup. The flow lock is a neat RODI accessory which has a pad that expands when it gets wet and triggers a shutoff valve. 
We also installed this PVC pipe with these pipe clamps along the wall to protect the RO tubing itself from pests, pets, or anything else that could damage the RO tube. Even with all this, it could fail, but I personally think we've done our due diligence and the benefits outweigh the risks. We haven't installed a controller on this tank yet, but we will near the end of this series. When we do, we'll almost certainly also install a horizontal float switch and solenoid as well as leak detectors like those available for the Neptune Apex. This is really the final frontier and most advanced level of protection, but more than just protecting me from issues, the Apex is going to notify me via email or text message that there's a problem I need to do something about as soon as possible. Hopefully we answered all your auto top off questions today. Next week we'll have protein skimmers. There's just so much to cover on this topic. I think it'll be a really exciting week. You don't want to miss it, so hit that subscribe button. If you're interested in any of the top offs or protection products we talked about today, check out this link. And don't forget to hit that like button if you find what we do here each week valuable. See you next week with week 17 of the BRS 160 protein skimmers.